Let's take a closer look at your power options when automating your Stronghold Iron or Infinity Aluminum driveway gate using one of our Ghost Controls kits. Hey everyone, Jason from Iron Fence Shop. When it comes to automating your driveway gate, folks often wonder how they're going to get power to the system. The Ghost Controls kits we utilize give you two different options, wired directly with a plug or solar power. So today I wanted to take a look at both power options and the pros and cons of each. Before we dig into that, let's take a look at how the power is supplied to the gate loaders. Here I have the battery box supplied to the Ghost Controls DEP2 or DTP1 decorative gate automation kits. As the name implies, this box will house the battery that actually powers your gate. So regardless of choosing plug-in or solar power, this battery is actually what's powering your motors. This way you can still operate the gate if the power goes out at the plug, or cloudy days keep your solar panel from charging the system. If we take a look in the box here, you'll see that there's two battery slots. The kits include one 12 volt 7 amp battery to power the plug-in functionality. However, you can order an additional battery for the second slot for additional power storage. It's recommended to use two batteries if you're using the solar panel, and it's optional to use with the plug-in power. Your power source has to either be the plug-in or solar panel option. They cannot be used in tandem with each other. So, now that we know that the battery is what actually powers the gate, let's take a look at your two options to keep that battery trickle charged. We'll start with the option that comes with the Ghost Controls kits we supply, plug-in power. The Ghost Controls DEP2 and DTP1 kits we supply for use with our gates will come with this plug-in transformer to keep the battery charged. This means you either have to have a wire with power run from the house down to an outdoor plug at the gate, or plug it into your house and run the power line down to the control box. Either way works. If your plug will be done at the gate end, just be sure you plug it into a weatherproof outlet with a cover like this example here. The plug-in option with the low voltage wire can work up to around 1,000 feet from plug to control box. The plug-in transformer has two connection screws for wiring here, and the other end of your wire is going to go to your control box. The wiring is not included in the Ghost Controls kit since we don't know if your gate is 50 feet from the house or 950 feet away from the house. We do stock wire in 100 foot increments that we can ship at the kit if you want to get that from us. If you needed way more or way less than 100 feet, you can also purchase the same type of wire at your local home store. What's required is a 16 gauge, low voltage, dual conductor, stranded wire that can be direct buried. You'll often see it listed as low voltage landscape wiring. But what if your gate is more than a thousand feet from the house or you can't easily get power down to the gate? That's where the alternative solar panel accessory comes into play to keep your battery charged. So let's switch gears and check out the optional solar power option you can utilize. This is the Ghost Control's 30 watt monocrystalline solar power panel that can be used with the DEP2 or DTP1 automation kits we sell. This is an add-on accessory and not included with those kits. This 30 watt solar panel accessory comes with 12 feet of attached wiring and mounting hardware. The kit is set up to mount to a piece of 2 inch or 3 inch round post that is not included with the kit, so you will need to provide your own mounting post and connection point based on where you're mounting the solar panel. Where you mount your solar panel is going to be key. Ideally it needs to face south and requires at least 8 hours of sun per day. This needs to be an unobstructed view of the sky, it can't get 4 hours of sun in the morning and be shaded by trees the rest of the day. Where you are in the country will also affect how well your solar panel will function and charge. This image here from Ghost Control splits the country into three separate zones. These zones are used to average out the number of gate, open, and close cycles you'll get when using solar power. If you go on the Ghost Control's website and look at the solar panel product page under Gate Opener Accessories, it will display this map and give you a table of how many open close cycles you can typically get out of your batteries when using solar power. For instance, I live in Ohio and it shows Zone 1 on the map. If I refer to the table shown on the webpage for the 30 watt solar panel we sell, it states 10 cycles for a dual gate opener. What that means is that I'll get around 10 open close cycles of the gate before the batteries go dead. If I lived in Florida in zone 3, I would get double the number of open close cycles at 20. Why is it more in zone 3 than zone 1? Temperature and sunny days. Batteries will lose performance in cold winter months up north in zone number 1. Florida also gets more consistently sunny days than Ohio does, especially in our gloomy winter months. Keep in mind those cycles can vary too. You may see more or less depending on temperature, how much sun your panel is getting, and how clean your panel is. Depending on your gate usage, Ghost Controls recommends also using a 12 volt deep cycle marine battery over the standard one. If your batteries go dead from lack of solar charge, you'll have to manually charge your batteries on a separate trickle charger to bring them back to life. So your location in the country, your average weather, average daily usage, and cleanliness of the panel can all affect the efficiency of a solar panel setup. So if you're planning on solar power for your gate, make sure you ask yourself the following questions. Can I get the panel to face south and get 8 hours of direct sun daily? 2. 
What zone are we on that map? Three, how many drivers are in the house and what would the average number of open closed cycles per day be? The answers to those questions will determine if solar power is a good option for you. So now that we've reviewed both options for powering your Ghost Control's gate automation, let's review the pros and cons of both, starting with plug-in power. Here are the four main pros to using plug-in power. Pro number one is not needing additional accessories beyond wiring since the main kit comes plug-in ready. Pro number two, outside of power outages, you'll always have more consistent and durable power. If the power is on, your gate is working. And even if the power isn't on, the gate is still working until the batteries go dead. Pro number three is plug-in power isn't location dependent. It performs the same across the country, unlike solar power. Pro number four is the plug-in setup is more durable. A solar panel can be damaged or destroyed by falling limbs or that jerky kid in the neighborhood that likes throwing rocks at the panel. With the plug-in transformer, the wiring is buried and it can be securely plugged in your garage or out of sight on the property side of the gate. There are two main cons to using the plug-in setup to power your ghost controls unit. The first con is the cost of running wiring down to your gate. A gate 50 feet from the house or garage isn't so bad, but running wiring 800 feet from the house can get expensive fast. The second con is distance restrictions with low voltage wire. Most folks elect to run the low voltage wire between the plug-in transformer and control box rather than run 120 volt wiring from the house all the way down to the gate, it's because it's immensely cheaper to set it up this way. However, with low voltage wire, there is a limitation how far you can run power through it reliably. That limit can vary, but usually anything near or greater 1,000 feet away from plug to power box won't work. So if your gate is near or over 1,000 feet from the house, you'll need to take a look at the solar panel option. So there's the pros and cons of using the plug-in power option. Now let's take a look at the pros and cons of using the solar panel option. There are three main pros to using the solar panels to power your ghost control system. Pro number one is that with a solar panel, there's no digging or trenching of wiring between the house and gate. So you don't have to do any digging or damage to your yard when using the solar panel, beyond the wiring between the solar panel and control box. Pro number two is that there's no distance restrictions on how far the gate can be from your house. With low voltage wire, you can only go up to around a thousand feet from your house. The solar panel could be any distance from the house and still power the gate. Pro number three is that it's free energy with no additional monthly electricity cost. Now granted, the plug-in option isn't drawing a ton of power, but there is still an electricity cost with using the plug-in power that you don't have with the solar panel. There are three main cons to using solar power. Con number one is where you're located in the country and how much sun the area around the gate receives can dramatically affect how well that solar panel performs. Con number two is inconsistent charging. Plug-in works so long as the power's on. However, a solar panel is only working when it's sunny. So your gate may work great in the sunny summer months and struggle in the dark and cloudy winter months. Even overly dusty or dirty panels can have decreased charging ability. Con number three is the solar panels are easy to damage. A falling limb or someone vandalizing the panel can render it useless. It's tough to protect a solar panel from damage without blocking sunlight. So there's your two options for powering your Ghost Control's automation system. Use these pros and cons of each to determine the best option for powering your Ghost Control's gate automation. Be sure to check us out here at ironfenceshop.com. Still shopping for a driveway gate and want to know six things to consider before buying one? Check out this video we did. If you have any other questions, you can shoot us an email at sales at ironfenceshop.com or give us a call at 800-261-2729. We look forward to hearing from you.